Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, to this very special edition of Renegade Wrestling. I am your host, J.J. Williams. But we're going to do something a little bit different this time. In the past, when we've had a pay-per-view, we've done prediction shows, and you've had like me and Beth, or me and Jeff, or me and Mike, or heaven forbid, Jade and somebody else. And we've sat there and bounced off people and told you what we thought of the show and the matches and what was going to happen. Well, this week, if everything goes the way I'm hoping it will, every day from now through Friday, you're going to get a special episode of just one of us sitting here or inside the studios talking about the matches and giving our thoughts. And then on Saturday, you're going to get a big round tape with a bunch of us and possibly even a couple of outsiders that aren't on the channel being part of said round tape. And then post show we'll hopefully do the exact same thing. We'll have a little round table post WrestleMania and we'll all give our thoughts about what actually happened. So today being Monday being the Renegades Day, you've already watched my Q and A show, hopefully, or you're gonna be watching it. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the card as it stands right now for WrestleMania. We have an eight-man tag team match featuring tons of funk, Brodus Clay and Sweet T, aka Tenzai, and the Funkadactyls, Cameron and Naomi, versus Team Road Scholars, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow, and the Bella Twins, Nikki and Brie Bella. What the fuck? Seriously? This should be Brodus Clay and Tenzai versus Rhodes Scholars versus Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston versus Team Hell No for the tag titles. And Cameron, Naomi, and the Billa should be nowhere near the wrestling ring for WrestleMania, except for maybe Cameron and Naomi to, you know, dance outside the ring and drop it like a tie. But since WWE Creative thinks that I actually give a fuck about this, I'm going to say Road Scholars and the Bella Twins to take this one. Rhodes Clay and Tenzai have not been where they should be. The Bellas just returned. I don't see them returning to a big loss. And if Road Scholars are officially going to be reformed, they need to be making a serious push for the tag titles. Chris Jericho versus Fong Dong. Fag Dango is going to win. They're not going to have him make his WrestleMania debut to get defeated by Chris Jericho. And Chris Jericho is in a place right now where he can lose to a guy like this and did not tarnish him. At least not too terribly bad. Um, again, I think they missed the boat with this one. I think it should have been Chris Jericho versus Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental title, Teacher versus Student, NXT Rookie versus NXT Pro. But alas, WWE Creative thinks we actually give half a fuck about Johnny Curtis with his chip on his shoulder and Fagdango, but Fandango for the victory. Ryback versus Mark Henry. This is the match where I want to see the, the ring collapse and just squash both guys so that we never have to hear from them again. I have nothing against Mark Henry, but Ryback sucks donkey balls. Um, seeing as how he is the lesser of two evils, I'm going to go with Mark Henry to take this match, even though if I was a betting man, I would bet on Ryback. Six-man tag team action. Randy Orton, Sheamus, and The Big Show, or Team No Cell, versus The Shield. Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. Believe in The Shield. I've been hearing grumblings about a possible heel turn post-mania for Randy Orton. Randy Orton and Sheamus don't trust Big Show. 
You know, so right there you've already got the possibility of Randy Orton turning heel and aligning himself with the Shield, or Big Show turning heel and aligning himself with the Shield. Either way, the Shield is going to win and prevail. Now we're going to get to the good shit. The shit that we actually give a fuck about. Or at least, me. No holds barred match. There's no holds barred. Okay, shitty movie aside. If Triple H loses the match, he must retire from in-ring competition. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman. I'd say there's only two ways this match could go, but that's obvious. Either Triple H wins or Brock Lesnar wins. That's kind of obvious there. But hear me out here. There's two ways this match will go. Either Triple H will win and set up a rubber match at Extreme Rules. Or it's just all going to be ended with Brock winning. Personally, I want to see Brock just annihilate the shit out of Triple H because he doesn't need to do this anymore. But I also think that there's enough money to be made in a rubber match at Extreme Rules. I kind of talked about this on last week's show. Triple H and Stephanie versus Brock and Sable, maybe. Get the wives involved in it. Have Vince and Trips and Stephanie's corner. Have Heyman and Brock and Sable's corner. I'm telling you, that's money right there. Um, but... Like I said, I want Brock to own, but I think Triple H is going to win so that they can set up a rematch. Even if they don't go with the wives, Trips and Brock at Extreme Rules, and then the, the stipulation can be that the loser, period, must retire from in-ring competition, and Brock's got to put his career up on the line, too. Triple H, oh, I already put my career on the line. It's your turn. If we're going to do this again, both of our careers are on the line. That's pretty extreme. Hence Extreme Rules. Will it be 21-0, and 0, or will it be 20-1? and 1? The Undertaker versus CM Punk. This is by and far the most talked about match on the card. I think it's the best built match on the card. And I'm still torn on how this is going to go. Maybe I'll be able to answer it a little bit better when we do the round table. But I think that Undertaker needs to lose this one. CM Punk needs to win this one, and Taker needs to lose it. That way Taker can retire, go in the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 30, and have it truly be the end of the era. If CM Punk is the best in the world, he needs to beat the streak. He's already mind-fucked Undertaker from here to Mean Mark Callis to Texas Red to You're a Dead Man, Ramsey. And all the way back. He is inside the dead man's head so bad right now. I see either a clean victory for Punk or a disqualification victory at this point and Taker gets DQ'd and a DQ is still a loss and a loss means the streak is still over. CM Punk beats the streak. Tag team titles on the line. Team Hell No versus Biggie and Ziggy. Dolph and Biggie Langston. Um... I think Dolph and Big E are going to take this one because I think, I've been saying this for a while, it's time for Team Hell No to dissolve, but I don't want to see Dolph with both the world and tag titles, so I say don't cash in at Mania just yet. What if the, the Money in the Bank contract is good for a year? Right, so he won in last year WrestleMania, or Money in the Bank, so it would be good all the way up to this year's Money in the Bank, in theory, correct? Stat Boy, can I get a verbal on this one? I would think so. Okay. Have the Money in the Bank pay-per-view this year. 
of the Raw winner win their briefcase, SmackDown winner win their briefcase. Have the SmackDown winner of this year's Money in the Bank try to pull a cane and cash in his briefcase later in the night. Yay, your winner, a new World Heavyweight Champion, whoever. I'm here to show the world, I'm here to show the world. This hasn't expired yet, because the show's not over yet. Dolph cash in at Money in the Bank. Exactly one year from him winning it. Everybody will have forgotten about it because they're all focused on the two new champions, the two new briefcase holders. I don't know if we've forgotten, but Dolph has one too. Dolph and Biggie become the new tag champions. Intercontinental title, Wade Barrett versus The Miz. Need I say anything more? He's The Miz, and he is awesome. And he was the star of his movie, where Wade Barrett was just a backup character with no dialogue in his movie. The third Marine is going to reign supreme as your Intercontinental Champion. Now, the big two. Alberto We, the people. I think Alberto is going to retain. I want Jack and Zeb to win, but there's going to be the rematch for that. Ricardo is injured. Ricardo will make his big return at Mania just in time to help Del Rio retain. Or... Ricardo will turn heel and align himself with we the people. I'm going to go with Del Rio to retain as of right now. I might change my mind though come the round table. And the main event, twice in a lifetime, Rock Cena 2. Honestly, I'm going to say just like this. I've not seen SmackDown yet. I need to watch SmackDown. I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to say The Rock is going to win. Rock Cena 2. But I reserve the right to change my opinion during the round table after I've seen last week's SmackDown, Raw tonight, and this week's SmackDown. Because I smell WrestleMania 17 style shenanigans in the mix. Stat Boy's puzzled. I know about a spoiler about somebody that came back on SmackDown, Stat Boy. I'm not going to spoil it for you though. But I smell WrestleMania 17 type shenanigans. Hashtag shenanigans. And if that is the case, then and only then will I change my pick to Cena. But right now, I'm going to say The Rock to retain. But like I said, I reserve my right to change my mind at the round table. That's it for my predictions for WrestleMania 29. What do y'all think? Leave your responses in the comment box. If y'all have some good responses, I might just have us read them off during the round table. Um, video responses. I haven't asked for them for a while. Send me your predictions for WrestleMania 29 in the match order that I just gave them to you and we'll edit your predictions into the round table till Friday's standard q and I'm the renegade J wrestling JJ Williams and I will see you next time right here from the Casa D18 Studios channel